This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. Hello and welcome to Walk the Talk. I am Shekhar Gupta and my guest today, well, I can give you a long introduction. President of the Brookings Institution, former Deputy Secretary of State, one of the most respected writers, columnists, analysts on world affairs, but really Strobe Talbot. Strobe, welcome to Walk the Talk. Thank you very much. And Shekhar. what a nice setting to, for, for us to be chatting here, you Lovely. know, uh, knowing you as somebody who, who's not just written about foreign affairs and who's given a uh, new direction to so many ideas uh, in the last quarter century but as somebody who was a co-architect of a completely new Indo-US relationship. It's wonderful to be back here. And you, you've been an old, uh, old traveler to India. This is my, th uh, it's been 30 years since I first came to India. It was in 1974. I was a, in your line of work as a reporter. I was accompanying Henry Kissinger when he came here to see Indira Gandhi in 1974. Well, and a lot has changed since then. Indira Gandhi and Henry Kissinger, those, those are very frosty days. I mean, as frosty as the weather today. <laughs> it should remind you of Washington. Yeah, but as I remember the visit that he made quite well. There was actually quite a bit of mutual respect between them. Uh -huh. I think the relations between Indira Gandhi and Henry Kissinger were better than the relations between India and the United States. Or, or between uh, Indira Gandhi and Nixon, for that matter. Uh, oh, that's for sure, yes, yeah. absolutely. But, but Describe, describe to me how exactly it was then, because in 30 years, everything has changed completely. 74 was Pokhran, 74 was, you know, the eve of the emergency. 74 was a very, message, a very different message Indira Gandhi in a very different India. Well, I think the big difference, of course, that 74 was still very much in the depths of the Cold War. Yeah. And uh, even though it was not literally the case and shouldn't have been the case, India and the United States ended up on opposite sides in the Cold War. That was really the overall geopolitical context of what was not a good relationship for a very long time between our countries. Well, uh, uh, just one thing said on this show uh, some time back to me, I think, I think the, his, the line that he quoted to me uh, from Madeleine Albright, he said, Madeleine said to me, 50 years in our relationship, the mice ate away. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's a phrase that's come out of Washington in the last couple of years, if you're not with us, you're against us. Yes. But there was a little bit of that same attitude towards India going back to John Foster Dulles. Right. When uh, Prime Minister Nehru went to Bandung, was one of the co-founders of the Non-Aligned Movement. In Washington, and particularly on the part of Secretary of State Dulles, the Non-Aligned Movement was seen as only slightly better than the other side in the Cold War. It was, you know, you know, and India in particular was seen, to use a famous word, tilting more, yes. more towards the Soviet Union than towards the United States. Those were interesting years because I have read some of the stuff that Dulles has written, you know, the stuff that's been declassified by the State Department. And I can see that he was truly fascinated by Nehru's personality. In one place, for example, he writes a long note to Eisenhower on how Nehru had a tendency of getting excited uh, in the middle of a conversation and climbing on the back of the sofa and sitting there. Uh -huh. and and he, he writes the whole three paras in wonderment, saying, how do you deal with this man? And then there's stuff from Eisenhower that, that, that says, uh, that says it's quite well known that what works with Nehru is a personal appeal and not as much policy and ideology and stuff like yes, that. Yes, but you know, Shekhar, uh, President Eisenhower himself actually had a rather warm feeling towards India and Nehru. You may recall Indeed, yes. that uh, Eisenhower invited Nehru to his uh, farm in Gettysburg and while he didn't make a, a great deal out of it publicly, he, Eisenhower, wanted to have a somewhat better relationship. In fact, that, with that, that comes across because I think that there are also descriptions of their discussions about China, mm -hmm. on which Nehru had a very different take. But, that would, but, but that's the fact. Uh, somehow, India and the U.S. have had a very different worldview over the past decades, mm -hmm. except now, maybe the past five years or ten years. Yeah. No, I think um, one of the reasons that President Clinton whom I worked for for eight years, was so eager to have a better relationship with India was that he sensed the end of the Cold War created an opportunity that none of, none of his predecessors had had. He would have liked to have initiated uh, a quantum improvement in the U.S.-Indian relationship during his first term. For a variety of reasons, he just didn't get around to it. But if you were, if you were advising a president on his South Asia policy during the Cold War, would you have advised him to handle it differently? <laughs> well, in a way, I did, since I was writing, uh, not, I, wasn't, I wasn't in the capacity of a presidential advisor. I was a, a journalist, and as you know very well, we, I, I, we, I, we, I, we journalists give advice to anybody. I, I, I,